Today I want to talk on the discourse called Udai. Actually, yeah. his uh, full name is Larudai, but uh, for uh, convenience, perhaps uh, only the last part of his name is used as Udai. So one day when Buddha was in Savatthi, uh, there were several monks, including Lal Udai. So Buddha called Udai, uh, how many subjects of uh, reflection are there? Reflection is uh, remembering over and over again, bringing to our mind and recollect. But when the Buddha asked this question, Venerable Udari remained quiet. He did not answer the question, as if he has not heard. But then the Buddha repeated the question again. And he remained quiet again. Buddha repeated the question third time. Normally when somebody Buddha asks a question three times, uh, people must answer, otherwise it is very serious. Since Buddha still was quiet, uh, Buddha then, uh, when Ananda was around, he asked Buddha, did you hear but the, the, but the Buddha asked you the question three times? You have not answered. Then Uda said, uh, yes, Ananda, I heard it. I heard it. Then why don't you ask the question, answer the question? <coughs> then Udai, since he was, you know, so honored, and then he said, uh, one day, Uh, he said, he did not say how many, but he simply gave an example of recollecting his uh, manifold past lives. One life, two lives, three lives, ten, twenty, uh, fifty, hundred, uh, one eon, two eons, and so forth. So, he began to give him the number of lives uh, one would uh, recall. That actually was not the answer. But since he did not know the answer, he simply said, these are the things, uh, what th this is what one recalls, remembers. Then, um, Buddha said, Ananda, this Uda is always like that. He is confused. When I ask a, a question, he gives me a very different answer. Then um, Buddha asked Ananda, do you know how many recollections are there? Of course, Ananda is, has a very wonderful memory. And Anna also had very uh, deep understanding of the Dhamma. As soon as the Buddha asked this question, when well, Ananda said, uh, uh, there are, one day, there are five subjects of recollection. So Buddha is how many? 
He answered directly, five. Then they are called, in, in, in Pali they are called uh, uh, subjects of recollections and uh, recollections of those who practice uh, have higher uh, training. Higher training is uh, for Adhichitta. Adhichitta means when Adhichitta means higher state of mind. Higher state of mind is uh, uh, concentration and insight. Samatha Vipassana, in other words, these two cultivated very deeply, then the person has a higher knowledge, higher wisdom. Uh, so when the Balananda said there are, there are five, then he enumerated the five. One is the attainment of the uh, first jhana, that is uh, secluded from sense pleasures, secluded from unwholesome states of mind. One enters and dwells in the first jhana. Secluded from sensual pleasures, uh, are, there are several kinds of seclusion. Physical seclusion called Kai, they are called Viveka, Viveka seclusion. Kai Viveka seclusion, physical seclusion, then uh, seclusion from sensual pleasures, and then uh, secluded from unwholesome states of mind. When we secluded from Kaya Viveka, Chitta Viveka, Upati Viveka, uh, Kaya Viveka means physical seclusion, going to a quiet place, Appa Sadda, Appa Nigosa, Vijanavata, Manusara Asaya, what is all the five qualities? Upper Sadda, less sound. Upper Negros, less hustle, bustle, you know, cacophonies. Uh, Vijanavata, uh, without human movement, vayu, air. Uh, Manusarasa and suitable for hiding away from human beings so that human beings would not see you behind a tree, behind a bush, behind and so forth. You have to fight so that when they see you, they will come and ask questions. If you hide away from that, Vijanavata, Manusarasa, and also suitable for the practice of meditation. What is Allah Sarupadi? These are the qualities of seclusion, physical seclusion. And then mental seclusion is the remaining for hindrances. The, the you know sexual pressures is one out of the five hindrances. And there are four more. Uh, hatred, sleepiness and drowsiness, restlessness and worry and doubt. And secluded from them, that means abandoning them too. Having done so, when you do all this, your mind will be full of joy. When uh, you overcome uh, greed, you have a joy. When you overcome hatred, you have a joy. When you overcome 
sleepiness or drowsiness, you have joy. When you overcome restlessness and worry, you have no remorse and you are full of joy. When you overcome doubt, you have joy. When the, when the mind is full of joy, that is a very good situation for you to get, gain concentration. And therefore, gaining the first journey concentration at that time is very easy. Uh, and therefore, it uh, has uh, rapture and pleasure born of seclusion. Rapture and pleasure born of this kind of seclusion. Uh, and then, yes, uh, uh, accompanied by thought and examination. That is Vitaka Vichara. Vitaka means. Uh, uh, Pali words, Sankapa also, the thought of letting go, and that is thought of generosity, then thought of metta, and thought of loving, uh, compassion. These are the thoughts the person has at that time. So now with these qualities, uh, he enters the first jhana. And then he... Uh, subsiding thought of examination, he enters and dwells in the uh, second jhana. The second jhana, is the, in the first jhana does not have that much concentration because of the thought and examinations. But when he, atta when he gets, we keep attaining the first jhana again and again and again, he uh, gets the uh, quite used to it, and then the first jhana is not very much uh, uh, great, and he naturally lies to the second jhana, where there are no thoughts. That is where we have real noble silence when we attain the second jhana. So the, then the person also has uh, inner confidence internal uh, placidity and unification of mind. And then he has uh, again this uh, second jhana. Then even the second jhana is not very great compared to the third. And uh, the, therefore, the second jhana's quality slowly fades away because third jhana is more subtle and more tranquil, uh, also which has some degree of uh, equanimity, and therefore the mind is clear and has clear comprehension, and he enters that state, third jhana state. So, now, he is uh, equanimous and mindful when he is full of, uh, and also happiness, full of happiness. This subject of regulation developed and cultivated in this way leads to happy dwelling in this very life. Now, all the four jhanas generally are called Dikta Dhamma Sukha Vihara. Lead happy and uh, uh, the, 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 the pleasure uh, in this very life. Happy dwelling in this very life. All the four jhanas. And so Therefore, when he attained the, if, the fourth jhana is not mentioned here. That is a very special thing. Fourth jhana is not mentioned in this particular place where one has, uh, one is having happy dwelling in this life. One dwells happily in this life. 
Why is that? Then one attain the fourth. Why fourth jhana is not mentioned? Uh, you attain the fourth jhana with the abandoning of pleasure and pain, and the previous disappearance of joy and joy, joy and dejection. Pleasure, joy, you reject when you attain the fourth jhana. Only when you attain the third jhana, you have uh, joy and happiness and certain degree of equanimity. The predominant factors in the third jhana is uh, joy and placidity. And therefore it is called real happy dwelling in this very life. Can be called for the the called the first three jhanas. So four jhanas is not mentioned here. That is one recollection. One the one place of recollection. That is attained in the first jhana. Second jhana. Third jhana. Attain in these four jhanas is called first recollection, remembering. Then he said uh, uh, attaining the uh, perception of light, attain to the perception of light, aloka sanya, the second recollection. Aloka Sanya means one when enters that jhanic stage, the person visualizes very bright light in order to overcome sleepiness and drowsiness. But here the Meditator has overcome sleepiness and drowsiness when he attained the first jhana. Now he wants to uh, recollect possession of darkness as darkness and day as day, as day, so at night. That means he does not visualize anything. He sees daytime as daytime, nighttime as nighttime. And then when he opened his eyes in at night, he will see the pitch dark. No more visualizing. When you meditate in the daytime, open his eyes. He see the daylight, bright daylight. So then he uh, open and uncovered. He develops a mind imbued with luminosity, shining state. So that is the. Uh, this is the subject of recollection and develop and cultivate in this way. Leads to obtaining knowledge and vision. Uh, knowledge and vision. Uh, vidya and dasana. Knowledge. And then Uh, he was uh, very pleased to see uh, when I opened to see this uh, this called knowledge and vision called Jnana Dasana in Pali. Knowledge is called Jnana, Dasana is called Vision. Jnana Dasana. 
what is that means he is very sincerely aware of what is in his at what he has attained and then uh, it called in pali yatha diva tatarati yatarati tata diva as he sees day as day and night as night that is he sees reality so then that is the second uh, place or subject of reflection and the third reflection of reflection is also very simple that is he reflect this very body upward from the sole of the feet downward from the tip of the hair enclosed in skin as full of many kinds of impurities people say that there are 32 impurities sometimes is called that things are car but actually in original discourse is only 31 not 32 reflecting on all the 31 parts inside the body uh that is uh, starting everybody most of the people know them by heart most of the people head hair body hairs nails teeth the skin flesh sinews bones bone marrow kidney heart liver pleura spleen lungs intestine mesentery stomach and then they added after that uh, that excrement bile phlegm pus blood sweat fat tears grease saliva snot fluid of the joints and urine these are the 31 parts of the body if you count it you can see only 31 and this is a subject of development and cultivation in this very life leading to abandoning sensual lust why do you want to cultivate this 31 parts of the body we collect them and then we find they are very natural things exactly like any other object and then the there is not one single part in this body that can arouse our lust and greed there we have to look at them with a neutral state of mind impartial state of mind not with any emotion if you look at them with emotion then you will be in danger so we have to reflect on it recollect on it remember them that we are made up of these parts these parts are neither good nor bad but they just are as they are and this also leads to a bending sensual lust then fourth reflection for subject of reflection Uh, is even very important that is what happens to this body after death there is called nine cemetery meditation you can see in satipatthana sutta four foundations of mindfulness practice this is uh, Uh, the last part of meditation on the body parts body my reflection on the body kaya anupassana anupassana means seeing 
as it is anu vasana seeing as it is when we uh, uh when we uh, uh, passed away and this is what happened to us that is uh in buddha's time uh some bodies were buried some bodies were burned sometimes they leave the bodies in cemeteries cemeteries trapped in piece of white cloth and put there anyway this we all have to remember this this happened to all of us when the body is like that one two three days dead bloated livid and festering that is first stage then he compares his own body with with it does this body this body means my body so called my body too is of the same nature it will be like that it is not gone beyond that it is not different from any other body this body is exactly like any other body after 2 3 to 4 days later then a that is the first level or suppose you were to see a corpse thrown aside in the channel ground being devoured by crows hawks vultures dogs jackals various kind of living beings so when the body is thrown away into the channel ground you don't see them these days but uh, you have to assume that is why the sutra says sayat abike as if you see uh, this happening you know what then they will come and eat the parts of the body there are pieces of meat here and there you know various kinds of you know crows hawks vultures dogs jackals or various kind of and then he will must reflect this body of mine will be like this it is it is not going beyond that or third level suppose you were to see a corpse thrown aside in a charnel ground a skeleton with flesh and blood a hell to get the wish in us uh that is the third level and the then the fourth level is after some times these animals eaten the body now the flesh and blood remains and held together with sinews then next level uh self less skeleton is made with blood held together with sinews so the the blood smeared bones will remain for some times and still held by the sinews then then this stain of blood dries up and then the still held together with uh sinews but no longer flesh and blood anymore then the next level is uh without flesh and blood held together with sinews and uh, then disconnected bones scattered all directions that is the next level you know here uh, hand bones here foot bones here uh, the shin bone they are thigh bone here hip bone they are back bone 
there is skull, and they compare that this body is fine, also will be like that. Next level, body is uh, like gone beyond. Uh, and suppose they have a, a corpse, such as ground bones, bleached white. All colors gone, all sin is gone, all blood gone. It bleached, turn white. And then after sometimes, it is old and uh, broken into pieces and turned into dust. And this body is will be like that. And one day, gush of wind comes, even this dust will be blown. And there may, do any, may not be anything there. This reflection leads to uproot our conceit, I am. Now while we are alive, we think I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. But this I am will totally vanish when this happens. Now the, this is the fourth reflection or subject of reflection. And the fifth subject of reflection is uh, attaining the uh, fourth jhana. Fourth jhana is put as a fifth reflection. And when you attain the fourth jhana, uh, with the abandoning of pleasure and pain, as I mentioned earlier, with the previous disappearance of joy and de dejection, one enters and dwells in the fourth jhana, which is neither pain nor pleasure, which has purification of mindfulness and equanimity. Both are purified. This is the fifth subject of recollection developed and cultivated in this way leads to a penetration of numerous elements. What are the numerous elements? Earth, water, fire, air. These are the elements. And uh, there are some other elements that are called 18 elements. Chakku dhatu, rupa dhatu, chakku vinyana dhatu. Sota dhatu, dhatu, Sota Vinyana Dhatu, Gana Dhatu, Ganda Jatu, Gana Vinyana Dhatu, Jiva Dhatu, Rasa Dhatu, Jiva Vinyana Dhatu, uh, Mano Dhatu, Dhamma Dhatu, Mano Vinyana Dhatu, Kaya Dhatu, Vata Dhatu, Kaya Vinyana Dhatu, and so forth. Eighteen elements. Chakku Dhatu means I elements. Rupa Dhatu and form elements. Shakku Vinyana means I consciousness element. Like that ear element, sound elements, ear consciousness element. Nose element, smell elements, nose consciousness element. Tongue element, taste element, tongue consciousness element. Body elements, tangible elements, body consciousness element. Mind element, mind objects element, and mind consciousness element. And these are the 18 elements, plus those four fundamental Patavi, Apo, Tejo, Vayu, earth, water, fire, air elements. And this reflection leads to penetrate all these elements. And then, when one penetrates all these elements, one's notion of self also be completely eliminated. When this was said as fifth reflection, 
fifth subject of reflection, the Buddha said, the good, good Ananda, that's good. Uh, but I like to add one more as a sixth subject of reflection. What is that? Uh, a person, a bhikkhu, ever mindful, bhikkhu goes forward, ever mindful, bhikkhu goes backward, ever mindful, he stands, ever mindful, he sits, ever mindful, he lies down, ever mindful, he sleeps, and ever mindful, mindful, he undertakes work, that means clear comprehension, clear comprehension, always keeping that everything is invariably is impermanent, unsatisfactory, without self, keeping this in mind. He goes forward, backward, look around, wear robes, eat, drinks, lie down, and we even go to bed with this kind of mindfulness. So the mindfulness is so powerful, it remains his mind all the time. This is the sixth kind of reflections that Buddha taught to Vendaval Ananda. Of course, Vendaval Udai, Lal Udai, was sitting next to him. He too learned all these refl subjects of reflections. Friends, as I mentioned, this is a little deeper than other discourses, but it is worth listening, worth practicing, worth remembering in order to liberate ourselves from samsaric suffering. Now, friends, I think we have to stop this and we, know, we need time to do some meditation. We have about uh, 25 minutes, so let us do meditation. Now, uh, I want to uh, focus your attention on this. Okay. Okay. <coughs> okay. <coughs> May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds, whatever living beings there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long or large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth. May all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another nor despise anyone anywhere, neither from anger nor ill will, should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate a world of world, a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous use, but virtuous and endowed with vision, removing desire for sensual pleasures. One comes near again to birth in the womb. With this metta thought, let us practice meditation at least for another 
20 minutes.
By means of these meritorious deeds, may I never join with the foolish. May I join always with the wise until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering. May the fear struck be free from fear. May the grieving be free from grief. So too may all beings be. From the highest realm of existence to the lowest, May all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Our friends, this is the end of today's session, and uh, I hope you all. Uh, Continue your practice of meditation. Even if I close the session, you continue meditation wherever you are. Let me, <coughs> there are about 40 people waiting outside to offer dharma. Now, let me share merits with all who are suffering in hospitals. May they recover very soon and return to normal life and continue the Adama practice. May the doctors, nurses, hospital staff who take care of these people sacrifice in their comfort, sometimes risking their life in this second, third round of COVID period, may they also find time to practice Dhamma meditation and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones and find some uh, solace, comfort in the Dhamma and understand the nature of Dhamma, practice meditation and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. <clears throat> May all those in the east, northern direction be well happy and peaceful. All those who north eastern direction, those who are eastern direction, southeastern direction, southern direction, southwestern direction, western direction, northwestern direction, up above us, those who are traveling on airplanes, birds, <laughs> those who are below us traveling in cruise ships and other ships and reptiles, fish and so forth. May they all find peace, happiness and a safe life and finally find time to practice Dhamma meditation and attain liberation from samsaric suffering. Okay. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Sadhu. Bante. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Thank you, Bante. Long night.